Hey there, welcome to our monthly open for business. Um, it is a beautiful Wednesday today and I'm very happy that we are at the Westin right across the river. Um, actually sitting out here by the pool. So this is a perfect little spot to do open for business this month. Um, and if it gets too loud, I apologize. I'll try to speak over um, any volume that's happening in the background. Um, but I hope that um, this will be a great talk about micro-influencers, um, kind of reviewing the article that was in the um, our Facebook event this month. We are looking at kind of who micro-influencers are, how can they impact our business, um, and kind of how you can find them, um, you know, how they're going to, what, what target audiences are they going to reach. Um, and if you're new here, we do open for business on the last Wednesday of every month right here at, on Facebook Live at noon. Um, we cover different marketing tips that we think would be beneficial to know for your business. Um, it only takes about 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your day. We welcome you to bring your lunch, bring your friend, bring a cup of coffee, um, and ask any questions that you may have. Like I mentioned, um, we do have an article that we post in our Facebook event every month that you're welcome to review beforehand, and um, that'll give you a good guideline to kind of follow, um, sorry, so many distractions. <laughs> That'll give you a good guideline to follow, you know, after the talk or before to kind of give you things to think about. So just starting off for today, um, kind of talking about who is a micro-influencer. So when we hear the word influencer, we might think that that's a little bit intimidating um, with, you know, millions of followers, but talking about micro-influencers, um, those are people who really can benefit your bottom lines and can actually help your business. Those are actually people, we're, we're talking about Instagram here, that's typically where we find them, but we're talking about people with anywhere between 10,000 and 80,000 Instagram followers, and that is not, those aren't hard numbers. Um, they can have a little below, a little above. Um, we'll talk about in a little bit quite a few Instagram uh, micro-influencers who have a little bit over 80,000, but I would still consider micro-influencers. Um, and they are essentially, they they have a following of different people in a niche audience. Um, so it might be all, you know, 17 to 25-year-old girls. Um, it could be all working women. It could be all moms. It could be all um, professionals in the film industry. It could be you know, people who are interested in cooking. It's a niche audience and they kind of have a hold of them. Um, that audience is, are loyal to them, they follow them, they they pull a lot of their influence from them and, and get a lot of good purchasing ideas from that micro-influencer. Um, so that's kind of who we're talking about today, just to define the word and to kind of rid ourselves of that whole, you know, Kim Kardashian or um, Jennifer Aniston, you know, Yes, those people are obviously hold influence on any social media platform that they may be on, but we wouldn't consider them the micro-influencers that we think can benefit our business. Um, so talking about how they can, you know, what, what are the numbers and the statistics about behind micro-influencers, they actually see 50% more engagement than those huge influencers like Kim Kardashian do. Um, if you just go look at, you know, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian's page versus a micro influencer like um, Katie Hellman's page, you'll see a lot of interaction between Katie and her followers versus on Kim's, you're going to see a lot of kind of random comments, um, a lot of backlash, and little to no um, engagement between Kim and her followers. So they actually have more engagement than a larger influencer would have, and then they also have 22.2 times more conversions than the average Instagram follower. So kind of negating going with both other ways. You know, they're better than um, the influencers with millions of followers because they're easier to reach. They have more of an engaged audience, but they are also better for your business than any average Instagram follower because, you know, if, if a business approached me and said, I'd love for you to promote this product, that's great. I only have so many followers, you know, I don't have that niche audience that micro-influencers micro influencers have a hold of. Um, so talking about kind of why do they matter, you know, how it's great that they have X amount of followers and that they have this following of people, but how can, you know, how can my, my business benefit from communicating and partnering with them? So 
Um, the article mentions that utilizing micro influencers um, is the closest that brands can get to um, this word of mouth marketing without going to advertising. Um, so essentially, we're talking about this because you know these people are are holding their audience. Um, and let's just give a real world real world example. If you are um, let's say a, if you own a stroller company, a local stroller company, you think that your stroller is very innovative, um, you know, they're creative, it's a local company, but it's hard for you to get in those big name stores like Target and Walmart. Um, and there is a Savannah mom who has 50,000, let's call her um, Jane. Jane has 50,000 followers on Instagram. She has, you know, of those 50,000, 30,000 might be moms who are actively following her and looking for good recommendations, who are looking for good products to buy, and she's constantly reviewing those things. Um, that might be a good partnership for um, your stroller business to look into as partnering and kind of showing her how your product works, and she's able to um, promote that on her page, and then all of her followers are saying, look at that, you know, look at that stroller that she's using. And let me tell you, when we say that they have very strong um, followers and loyal followers, we mean that essentially the products that they post and the ones that they review and love, it is un not uncommon for followers to immediately go and purchase that product. Um, it's kind of as crazy as that sounds, and I'm guilty of it as well. You know, when my favorite bloggers and micro influencers post things on Instagram, I am so quick to say, okay, I, you know, I've got to buy that or I've got to get that. Um, so it really is the magic behind this is definitely there. Um, but you know, that can, at the same time, you know, you see why it matters because, um, like I said, you know, as much as those celebrities do have influence, I don't typically go to a big name celebrity for, um, reviews, recommendations, or, or really inspiration for specific products. It's typically your peers. And we tend to consider those micro-influencers more of peers. Um, a micro-influencer typically would respond to um, direct messages, their emails. Um, they try to at least, you know, most of them do. Um, they a lot of times would reply back to comments on their posts. So all of those things increase that engagement and do make them feel more like a peer or a friend to their followers than would a celebrity, um, which is why they do hold so much influence because we are looking to our peers for, you know, where to shop, what to wear, what, what food to uh, cook, um, what products to buy our children, all that good stuff. So three questions that you might want to ask to find the right micro-influencer um, for your business is A, does this influencer's audience match my own? So yes, it's important to look at their page, look at their, I don't, I'm not sure if value would be the right word, but to look at kind of, you know, what they're all about, get their gist. But it's also really important to kind of go through their followers, see who's commenting, see who's engaging, see who is in that follower base, um, and see if, um, you know, there is a lot of scamming behind micro-influencers. Um, not legit ones, obviously, but on, on social media platforms in general, there are ways to kind of ramp up your followers and they're not real, if you will. Um, it's just kind of like fake following. I can't remember the... the um, official term of that, but you, you definitely want people who have organically brought up their Instagram followers um, and who have a base that are loyal to them because otherwise, you know, if, if they just have 100,000 followers, that number doesn't really count if they haven't organically grown that list and it's just kind of all um, random accounts. So that's definitely something to check on first to make sure it's legit, to make sure that um, their followers match the goals that they're setting on their page. Two is how many followers are they actually reaching? And that goes back to the engagement as well. Um, even if, say, that list of followers includes a lot of great people, um, it looks like a lot of moms maybe, if they're not engaging, then it might not be um, the best fit for you. So for instance, you'll know that you follow a lot of people on Instagram, but um, not all of those people come up into your social media feed because Instagram filters out um, who they think you should kind of see more than others based on your engagement with those people. Um, you definitely want to find a micro-influencer that has engagement on their posts and who's tagging people, has a lot of comments, who's responding, um, because that'll be the loyal follower base who will actually see them 
and that's increasing their visibility as well. Um, does this influencer's audience engage? That was their third question. It goes right along with the first two. If they don't engage, it's probably not going to be the best fit. And then um, finally, is this influencer's content in a style that matches my brands? Um, obviously, just to give a very straightforward example, um, if you are a micro influencer and you um, your specialty is baby products and then you're a business, you have this stroller, everything's organic on your side, nothing is organic on their side, it's not gonna be a match. Um, another good one would just be, you know, if you sell uh, professional attire for women, this uh, micro influencer styles a lot of different professional attire for women, but totally different styles. You know, this is floral and feminine, and this is very structured and modern. You know, it's still not going to work. Um, it might be reaching those audiences, but it's just the style doesn't quite match. So make sure the branding matches. That's, of course, important. Um, so then looking at kind of who they are in Savannah, just to name a few, um, the first ones that can, kind of came up in my mind were Emma McCarthy, who owns the Emma McCarthy shop down on Abercorn. Um, her page is wonderful, and um, I'm not sure that she would say that she's a micro-influencer, but, you know, she has a huge following on Instagram. She has two kids um, that um, are just precious. So if, if I were a child's clothing brand, I might say, hey, Emily, you know, try out these these swim trunks for the summer. We'd love to have you, you know, talk about them on your Instagram. Or um, she does a lot of, obviously, the Emma McCarthy shop has a lot of home stuff, but just talking about, like, bigger pieces, I don't know about, uh, say, a couch or something or outdoor furniture. If there were an outdoor furniture line that said, hey, Emily, you know, your back porch looks so fun. Um, we'd love to offer you a new wicker set. Things like that, you know, just looking for those different partnerships there. Um, and kind of looking at, uh, you know, Savannah is is a smaller community. These micro-influencers can be found in larger cities like uh, Atlanta, Dallas, Nashville, New York, L.A. A lot of the ones that I follow on Instagram personally are in Charleston and Dallas and uh, Birmingham and even in Seaside. Um, but just kind of thinking about Savannah in general, you know, the limit that we set, our, our micro-influencers here might be on the lower end of followers because we are a smaller community. If you go to uh, Dallas, you're probably going to find people who are considered micro-influencers with closer to 200,000 followers. Um, just because it does, it varies depend on the size, depending on the size of the city. Um, and just to kind of give a few other examples, uh, I know there is a young woman in... Um, Seaside, her name is Elizabeth, and she does uh, baking. So she'll have a lot of different companies partnering with her with different baking tools and, um, you know, different pans and different uh, flours and sugars to use. And so it really can apply to almost every single industry, every single brand. Um, and, and I just kind of want to touch on all of those to wrap up on this, you know, of, of, of different micro-influencers that I've seen and that our team has seen and, and the different industries that they hit, but also the marketing thoughts for business. And while I'm kind of looking at that, I just want to see if anybody else, okay, it looks like James and Caleb have joined, so hello, thank you. Um, but just going back to, um, and y'all feel free to please leave any questions that you might have, or if y'all have, you know, both of you might be in totally different sections of, um, you know, you might follow totally, Caleb, you might follow micro-influencers in the jewelry business. Would love to hear about those. Um, and James, you might follow, you know, micro-influencers in politics. So I'd love to hear about this as well. Um, but anyways, so a few that I love, just to name a couple, are Living with Landon. Um, she's based out of Nashville. Lone Star Southern, is her name is Kate. She is in Dallas. And then Holy City Chic. She is in Charleston, and I'm going to kind of, I use these three, these three examples just because um, they are three incredible women, but they touch on very different audiences, um, and very different brands would use them, and I think Living with Landon does a great job of showing how almost every industry um, could use micro-influencers. So starting off with Living with Landon, her name is Landon, she's a mom, 
She is married to a uh, former NFL player, and then they have two kids um, who are, I think, like middle school aged. But just to name a few ways that brands in Nashville have utilized Landon is, A, she loves organization. She has a beautiful house. She's constantly cleaning, reorganizing. And she has marketed for a, um, it's like a trash service. They literally a, uh, drop off a, a dump essentially in your front yard, but it's, it's very nice looking. And you just, if you're going through a huge clean out at home, you're able to just throw everything in that huge container in your front yard and they come two days later to pick it up. So she advertises for them, um, her lawn care company. She talks about how they are the best lawn care company in Nashville. Her hair um, stylist, she talks about how they are the best. Her uh, nail person, she says, you know, this is the color. She very much, you know, talks about the colors that she likes, the brands that she likes, and then where she goes in Nashville. Um, she has had, she gets, that you can see total, a lot of brands using her in Nashville, you know, sending little things for parties that she has or little cookies. Um, and she's always posting those on her Instagram and it's great visibility for those local little companies of, Hey, look what bakery just sent me these beautiful custom cookies for my party tonight. And then all of her followers who are watching those stories are seeing, okay, you know, look at all those precious cookies. If you're in the Nashville area, order some cookies. And sometimes it's like, these people can ship to, you know, anywhere in the Southeast. So then someone like me watching is thinking, look how beautiful those cookies are. If I ever had something that, you know, I would need total custom branded cookies, that might be a great place to look. Um, Holy City Chic. She is, I don't recall her, her actual name. That's her, uh, her Instagram name, but she is in Charleston. She has two little kids. Um, and she gets a ton of, little uh, baby boutique sending her clothing and little toys. Um, I know there's like a monthly shipment that she gets of STEM toys. Um, and I can imagine that all moms following her are like, wow, these toys are so educational. They are so precious. They are specifically for, you know, STEM related and they, they're just perfect. It's monthly. It comes in. It's not too much. It's very educational, but it's still fun for your kids. I mean, they're very unique. You wouldn't be able to find that in a Target or a Walmart or Toys R Us or anything like that. Um, she also, I see, I've seen that she had, um, I think it might have been the Mercedes in Charleston, reached out to her about she was going on a trip, and they let her take a car on that trip, or maybe she did it once to a trip, and then once just you know a week long, they let her have the car, and she was talking about the car the entire time, you know. I love the interior. It rides so well. It fits our strollers. It fits with my kids. Um, so that was very unique on um, the dealerships part to reach out to her and, and get her to promote those on her Instagram stories. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, she has a, a very much more of a mommy following, um, but she also does style tips, which is why I love to follow her personally. And then the final one is Lone Star Southern. Um, her name is Kate and she is in Dallas. She is um, a recent college grad, I believe, but she's had huge businesses like Lily Pulitzer partner with her um, just because she does have such influence with this age range between, I would say, 18 and probably 30 of style tips, and um, now she's engaged, so there's a lot of opportunity for different bridal places to get involved, um, and those are more on a, a regional level, but um, you know, that can be utilized in all different ways. And these are all just to try to get you thinking about, you know, different, different ways for your business to get involved. You know, you may think to yourself, well, I'm not one of those small creative businesses or, you know, I don't have like little clothes that they could try on or, um, toys that I could send. But really when I, the reason I mentioned the trash services is that, you know, any business can really become involved. Um, if you are finding, you know, those micro influencers who are aligned with your brand, who do have the following that you want, there is a way to get involved. Um, and it's helpful, I think, to start by following micro influencers in general to kind of see the different ways that brands are partnering with them, to see the different ways that, you know, they're mentioning them, what you like, do you like the, you know, there are some micro influencers, honestly, in my opinion, that, um, it seems very staged when they're talking about different products. It's very obvious that they were approached by a company and that they, um, you know, are just kind of 
laying it out there to show you just for the business. Whereas others, you can tell that it's very meaningful to them. They're very happy to share and they personally love the brand. Um, another big one that I forgot to mention was in makeup. There are plenty of beauty bloggers out there, um, which are kind of in a different realm, but you know, a few of them, Katie Hellman, um, Emily Gemma, they are both in Dallas. They're micro influencers, um, in my opinion. And makeup brands are using them to the fullest, I would say, um, you know, any type of really beauty product you can see. And, and they're being very honest about them saying like, I don't like this one. I do love this one. And that's what, that's what creates that niche group of people is the fact that, um, they're honesty. So you do want to look for micro influencers with honesty. Um, but their honesty and you know, the way that they're reviewing those products, they're not just saying okay to every single brand that approaches them. They're really choosing the ones that fit with themselves personally and fit with their followers as well. Um, but like I mentioned, I would love to hear about your favorite um, influencers, who you think is you know a great person to partner with, who you've seen partner with brands and it's been very successful. Um, and again, also you know what brands have you seen partner with micro influencers? Um, just off the top of my head, I've seen Weezy Towels has done a phenomenal job partnering with. Um, micro influencers to get the word out about their beautiful towels. Um, I'm trying to think of any others off the top of my head. I mean, there's just there's wonderful brands out there who are doing a great job of utilizing these people who are much less than say um, a huge influencer out there who would kind of use up that budget for you. Um, you know, their budgets are smaller. They have that niche group of people. They have more engagement. And if you can find the right fit, I you know absolutely recommend partnering with them, sitting down, having a meeting, and um, seeing where you can go from there. So um, I know that was a lot of rambling. This is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about because I really do think it is so interesting and there are so many great brands doing it in Savannah, great micro-influencers in Savannah um, and in the region as well. You know, like I mentioned, Atlanta has a lot of great ones as well. I didn't touch on those quite as much, but they have a lot of, of great influencers as well that are definitely look worth looking into. Um, but as always, I am Elizabeth Poole. I'm the Director of Communications for Carriage Trade Public Relations in Cecilia Russo Marketing. Um, and we will be back next month in May, I can't believe it's already May, um, for our May -ish, uh, episode of Open for Business. We haven't released that topic yet. But um, feel free to ask any questions that you may have for the next few hours or a few days. We'll be checking and we'll absolutely get to those. And we'll post some of the micro-influencers that we talked about during today's session. Um, thank you to everyone for joining in. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. And I hope you'll have a beautiful rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Thanks.